Well, good morning. It's Friday, finally the end of your work week, right? And I hope you're, you're getting a lot out of this study and it's encouraging you, mostly because you understand what Paul was writing in the church of Corinth. I know so many people uh, ask me with Corinthians, they have these questions. And we're going to discuss today as we finish up chapter 7, some of the probably most misunderstood scriptures in Corinthians. Uh, and, and Paul's going to be talking about marriage. Uh, now, we're, going to, we're not going to read it all because we're going to look at verses 25 through 40 today. But I'm going to pull out a few things for you. And, and you need to take the time to read it and really digest it. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, call me, uh, text me. Uh, go ahead and put a messenger on YouTube. A message on YouTube. I appreciate it all, and, and as you know, I respond to it. Any of you that have done so, so, uh, so we're going to go ahead and pick up. So make sure you you have those those pens in your Bible and your journals ready. And um, and 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 they had asked a question to Paul. This they said, well, should we, a person get married? Because you said to. If you don't know how to follow Jesus, follow you and you're unmarried. And remember we talked about some people were getting divorced, thinking that that would make them more spiritual. So Paul addresses this. And he kind of goes back and forth, if you notice, in his letters as he does so. All right. Now remember this. Paul is expecting the Lord to come back very soon. Figured in his lifetime. All right. And, uh, uh, and, and so when he's writing this, all right. He's writing it with the idea that we're in, the, we're in the last days. Now, we're in the last days now. We expect the Lord to come back very soon also, don't we? All right. But it might be another 100 years. It might be another 500 years. It might be tomorrow. We don't know for sure. And we need to be prepared. But he, when he's writing this, he's thinking that the Lord's going to be coming back any time. And so they're asking him, should we get married? Should we, should we have a family? Uh, what if I'm already engaged? All right, I've already betrothed. I've already made a commitment to this person. So Paul was answering these questions. Now, the first thing I need to point out on this, all right, is verse 25. It's imperative when you start reading verses from 25 through 40, understand what's being said. And the very first thing in verse 25, it says, now about virgins, he says, I have no command from the Lord. But I have, I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So what Paul was saying right off the bat is this. This is not coming from God. This is coming from me. This is my opinion. All right. Uh, there's very few places in scripture that does that. So when we look at scripture and understand that all scripture is God breathed. All right. We've got to understand all scripture is God breathed. But there's some sections here that pulls out and it, and it becomes an opinion. In this case, Paul is saying this. This is my opinion, not of God. So as we read a few verses, it's important to understand what's being said. All right. That it's Paul's authority on this and not God's authority on this. Now, don't shoot the messenger, all right? I don't want people calling and saying, Pastor, are you saying that Scripture isn't, you get to pick and choose Scripture? I, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm telling you that Scripture, if we're following the Scripture, and we're following the facts, the facts are Paul says, this is not of the Lord's, this is my opinion. So over the next few verses, we're going to look at what he's talking about in this short time. <clears throat> all right? And, and understand these were his personal beliefs. So... He then says, if you are pledged to anyone, don't look for, don't look for anyone. But if you're pledged to someone, then, then basically, uh, you know, you should probably honor that pledge. All right. Uh, but he's saying you're really not going to have time to do so to look for anyone because the Lord's coming back. He's coming back right away. And we know that Jesus even said what? No one knows the time of his coming except the Father. All right. So, but he goes on to say though, but if you do look for somebody, if you do end up wanting to, to uh, date and, 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 and uh, get married, get engaged, get married, there's no sin in doing that. There's none at all. Nothing scriptural against that. All right. He wants to understand that you may face some troubles because he's looking at the world coming to an end very soon. And I'm going to jump clear ahead to 32. In verse 32, it says, 
it would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs. How can he please the Lord? So and he's very right in saying this. Paul is very right in saying this. You know, when we are married, all right, uh, things get taken away from time of God. We have a spouse, we have a wife, or if you're a woman, you have a husband, all right, uh, that needs our attention. They need our time. And then when you bring children into it, well, you know, they take every waking minute you have if they can, right? And so uh, that's, that's what he's referring to there. Then we pick up in verse 35, and he says, I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. So he's talking about what happens uh, uh, those that are, you're engaged to. Should, should you feel you should marry them? Should you go ahead and do it? Well, he tells them to go ahead and do so, of course. All right, don't, don't wreck that relationship. Then he speaks of those that are widowed. And it's okay to remarry, all right? But he needs to be, uh, it needs to be to another believer that you should not be unequally yoked. So if you're widowed and you want to remarry, all right, that's okay. But it has to be to a believer, which again is godly principles, all right? And he's talking about that. And then he wraps it all up in verse 40, all right? When he says it is his personal judgment. So from verse 25 to verse 40, if you look at this, Paul was saying, this is what I personally think. This has not come from the Lord. This is my personal judgment. And it says this in verse 40, in my judgment, she is happier if she stays as she is. And I think that I too have the spirit of God. And so what he's saying is, listen, I'm a single guy and I'm very, very happy. So I can devote all my time on the Lord is what he's saying on that. So in this scripture, all right, when we see this scripture, People pull it out and, and they have a lot of confusion with it. Well, when we take and we understand where it comes from and it's a perspective of Paul, it's not the actual word that God has told them and said, you need to tell them they need to do this. Now, this is the same scripture that they use for Catholic priests and nuns. And it's, it, 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 it's not that it isn't solid advice. It's very solid advice. All right. Uh, you know, Paul is wise. And what he's saying, he's saying, listen, it'll take a lot of time away from you, uh, your, your devotion to the Lord, if you're spending time in a marriage, raising children and all those things. But clearly, all right, clearly, let's the church know that it is of him and not of God as he talks to them in these verses. Now, again, don't send me poison pay all letters. Just you, you, you research it. You'll find out what I'm saying to be factual. All righty. But that's what it means. And those scriptures confuse a lot of people. And then when we understand what the, what's going on and what was transpiring and the belief that Paul had at the time that, listen, we're in the end days. If, if somebody told you Jesus is coming back in six weeks, would you say, oh, I'm going to run out and start a relationship and get married in that time? Or would you devote all your time to God? And that's what he was saying. Does that make more sense now? I hope so. All right. And I hope you enjoy the, your, your rest of your end of this week, it, uh, uh, your work day or whatever you'd happen to be doing. Father God, we, again, we thank you for your word. Oh, Lord God, you make it clear for us if we dig into it and we learn and we find it. We understand, Lord, as, you're, as you had Paul writing these epistles, I'm sure at the time, Lord, he had no idea it would be 2,000 years later, that we would be using them to go ahead and to, to direct our paths and to use, uh, use them to, to uh, continue to grow your church and to teach and disciple your church. I thank you so much for this man who loved you of such high integrity. And Lord God, we just pray that uh, we can be like Paul, that we can have that kind of love for you that he did, that he was sold out completely for you, Lord Jesus, and still is, of course, because he's with you. Lord, we ask you to bless this day, and we ask you to just put a special, special anointing upon everybody that hears it. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless.